Hello, my name is Austin Shane Tall from Loganville High School, and I will be doing my audiovisual lecture on the U.S. Constitution. So for a little background before I get into the actual Constitution, um, before the Constitution was introduced to the United States as a way of governing their country, they were ran by the Articles of Confederation. And the Articles of Confederation have many negatives, but some of them just being that Congress couldn't impose taxes, um, the executive branch was not a thing, so there's nowhere to enforce laws, and there's no national government like inducted to protect all the citizens' rights. But that's where the con Constitution came in because they had just gotten freed from Britain and felt that they should unite as a country. So uh, with the Constitution, there was, there was multiple benefits, but also downsides. So, but I'll start with the bad news and then get to the good news. The negatives of it was that Congress could not improve poor attendance by delegates. So basically, when there was a big decision that needed to be made and multiple members of the House needed to show up or a certain number needed to show up for the decision to be overturned or changed, if nobody showed up, Congress couldn't do anything. Congress didn't have the power to be like, you have to show up today to change change this law. They couldn't change that. Um, another negative being Congress pleads with states to contribute national money. So basically, if Congress was in debt from a war, or Congress was in debt from just random things, they asked the states for money rather than being able to pull money out of somewhere else. They have to beg the states for campaigns and money and politics and all this stuff. Uh, and another, I guess the last negative is American and foreign nations, or they're unable to control commerce between American and foreign nations. So basically, Congress, this is all about Congress. All the negatives kind of just affected Congress, but they weren't able to regulate trade and they weren't able to control what goes in and out of the country. The U.S. is kind of just in charge of that and Congress just has to sit and watch. They, they can't regulate and control all that. So I got most of those. I got the first two from the textbook uh, and the positives. I created a full national government with three branches. The judicial branch, judicial branch, which evaluates the laws, follows the legislative branch, which makes the laws, and then the executive branch puts in the laws. So picture it like a legislative branch being a, a like a law writer, and then the judicial branch being like almost like a like a teacher reviewing it, making sure it's okay and won't set the country too out of whack, and then the uh, executive branch being like the police that enforce it and make sure everything goes clear. And then another benefit is it divides power between the federal government and the states. So if the federal government had all the power, every state would be the same, everywhere would be the same. The country would be practically communist, just ran by one big power. But if the states had all the power, you know, each state could have their own power to do whatever they want. They could rebel against the next state or they could, you know, cause many problems. But with the Constitution dividing everything equally between states and federal government, it provides for a much cleaner system. But um, the last benefit is it protected various individual liberties among citizens, like life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, which came from Thomas Jefferson, which also came from the textbook. Uh, Thomas Jefferson, what he meant by life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, I think most people get caught up on the pursuit of happiness. Um, most people interpret it as kind of like you have the free right to do whatever you want to get happiness, but just the ability to have happiness in general is like a big part of that. Because there's some countries out there that just don't have any options to do anything. They're locked in the pursuit of happiness and liberty and all these things just allow people to branch out and go many places. Um, so now I'm gonna go into the time. I got this from ussenate.gov. The constitution was written in 1787. 11 years after the country was like founded, 1776 is when the country was founded. 11 years later, we came up with the constitution, which was a good way to run our government. In 1788, it was ratified, uh, which means basically it's just, it was approved and sanctioned like officially and it was allowed to be a thing. And then it was, it's been in effect since 1789, and it is still the longest national government article that's still in effect. Um, and then <clears throat> George Washington signed it first. So this was, I mean, it seems kind of obvious because he was the president, but it's just, you know, it's just a little fun fact. And then an argument, like an opposition to the Constitution was that some people oppose the Constitution and fear that a stronger government threatened the sovereignty of the states. So they were basically scared that they were going to lose their freedom and they were scared that 
which is like I said earlier, with, if the federal government had one big power and controlled the entire states, it would, it would be pretty bad. But the way the Constitution split it up piece by piece by piece, giving each federal government and state decently equal power, it, it's run very well. I got this from constitutionfacts.com. And then another fear was that a new centralized government would practically recreate Britain, which they had just escaped Britain in the war and they had just earned their freedom. People didn't want to revert back to that, obviously. And then just some fun facts. Uh, these are, some of these are from the State Bar New Mexico. Uh, it has 4,400 words. It is the shortest constitution, but longest lasting. So like it is the fewest words, but it is obviously straight to the point because it has lasted so long. Uh, Pennsylvania is actually spelled wrong on the Constitution. Constitution Day is September 17th when it was ratified. Uh, when it was ratified, the lack of a Bill of Rights stuck out. So later they went on and added the Bill of Rights, which is like, we the people, and then the iconic 10, you know, Bills of Rights. And then Ben Franklin was having health problems, so he needed help signing it. And it was just so powerful and emotional to him that he actually cried when he was signing it. Um, and that's basically it for the Constitution, but it was a great government introduction that kind of has stuck with us today and provides power equally between all people. And that's about all I got. Thanks for watching.